Hey everybody, today we're out here taking a look at one of my favorite power tools. It's this Overland Carts four-wheel drive electric wheelbarrow. Now, if you're a subscriber to the Alex and Autos channel, then you may have seen my parody video for April Fools where I claimed that this was the best four-wheel drive electric vehicle in America. But in all honesty, this is one of my favorite power tools, period. And in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about why. We've had this model for about two and a half years overall and tons and tons of hauling. There are several different beds and several different bins available. If you want a flat bed, that's available. If you want more of a wagon style hopper, that's available. This is an eight cubic foot wheelbarrow style bin. There's also a 10 cubic foot bin available, but I got this one because I figured that if you put 10 cubic feet of granite, like these granite rocks right behind me, we hauled all of these rocks in this wheelbarrow, that it probably would have troubles going uphill. Let's also talk about the construction. So down here, if we take a look at the bottom, we have airless ag tires. So these have an ag design, so they can track a little bit better in mud or rougher situations. It's a double wheel design, so they're eight wheels total, four wheel drive, both axles are powered. But very importantly, we don't have a limited slip differential of any sort in this cart. Now, the big reason for that, according to Granite Industries, is that if you get the two-wheel drive model, it's a near zero turn radius cart because the back wheels are castered and then we have essentially the same front axle as we see on this particular model. And that allows that model to turn in really tight circles. However, if you get the four-wheel drive model like this model is, then obviously it cannot turn in those tight circles anymore. And so I think that it is a little bit of a limitation that we don't have a limited slip differential. Right over here, we have the battery pack. This particular one is a 21 amp hour battery. It's worth noting that if you get this current version, uh, then we get a battery that's about 60% larger. We're also told that it can put out a little bit more power, which is a nice touch. This model does run out of juice every now and then when going up really steep hills. The control unit's located right up here on the handlebars. This has the forward and backward switch. If we had the power dump option, there'd be a switch for that. And then we have the emergency stop switch right there as well. The throttle's over here on the right side. You can see that ours has been used and abused. The throttle's a little bit loose because we dropped a rock on it. And then uh, we have some little grips right there on the side. It's a pretty simple twist throttle. And then charging happens via this plug right down there at the bottom. The charger is separately replaceable if you ever need to do that. One of the reasons that we chose this electric wheelbarrow rather than some of the gasoline powered wheelbarrows out there is that we live out here in the forest and small engines don't really seem to have the lifetime that I really want out here. They also require constant adjustment and fiddling and two and a half years of living out in the rain, this never gets put away in a garage or a storage shed or anything like that. It just gets rained on all year long, charger gets rained on, etc. Everything has operated flawlessly for two and a half years. Again, the only problem really is this throttle. The fuel gauge is sort of falling off there and the throttle does stick now and then. So we have a new throttle on order. Unfortunately, due to the fun pandemic right now, it may be delayed in shipping. Now the price tag obviously is an important factor with this guy. It starts at $2,300 if you want the two wheel drive model with the casters and one of the smaller bins. And it can go up to about $4,000 if you want the biggest bin, the power dump mechanism and all wheel drive. I have to say, if I were to do this again, I would probably get the power dump mechanism even though it adds extra weight because if this bin is truly full of granite boulders, and definitely that would be over the weight capacity of this unit, then it is pretty difficult to dump the bin. Weight capacity is 500 pounds when going on a slope, 750 pounds for level travel, and we certainly overload this guy all the time. There is a latch mechanism right here so you can lock the bin into place to keep it from dumping forwards. There used to be a side dump option, but we're told that that wasn't a very popular thing to get, so they've actually canceled the side dump option. We're on a slope right here where the Jeep next to me has absolutely no problem getting up and down this hill. Um, and this wheelbarrow is okay as long as it's empty. You can definitely see that we have enough traction to climb up slopes like this with the bin empty. Now, if the slope is a little bit steeper than this or the traction is a little bit lower, then it can be a problem. Weight is also a problem. So let's go ahead and load this thing up and see how it does. 
we have to move some potting soil over to our garden area. This is a perfect task for this wheelbarrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess that these bags total are about 200 pounds or so. You can definitely see we're getting a little bit of slip up there for those front tires, but overall it tackled that well. So let's uh, drive along to the garden and see how it goes. One thing worth noting is that this is a lot more stable than the average wheelbarrow, obviously, because we have four wheels, not one wheel and two stands. But the steering mechanism is a little different. Since the steering happens on the back wheels, it can be a little bit tricky to guide it in exactly the right spot. It does take a little bit of practice. So personally, I find it easier to just walk alongside the wheelbarrow. This is the easiest way because then steering becomes more natural. If I turn it to the right, turn it to the left, it goes exactly where I want it to go. Top speed is around 3.2 miles an hour, which is a pretty comfortable walking speed. I have to admit, when I was initially shopping for this wheelbarrow, what I really wanted was something like a cross between an ATV and a wheelbarrow, something along those lines. And it is worth noting that that is not this electric cart. So for instance, if I wanted to try this slope right here, we just get that. We get two wheels slipping, one on each axle. It's just not that kind of off-road wheelbarrow. As with every power tool out there, it is important to set your expectations appropriately. One nice touch is that it does have an electric brake. So the moment you remove your hand from the throttle, it will come to a complete stop and it will lock itself there so that way it doesn't slide down a hill. Because of the rear steer mechanism, when you start going over some obstacles like these logs right here, you do end up with the, uh, the steering mechanism just sort of yanked out of your hands. And here we need to get a little bit of speed to get up and over some of these logs. Again, this is not really ATV meets wheelbarrow. This is sort of like electric powered utility cart. Keep that in mind. But given time, you can definitely claw over a reasonable number of obstacles. The path we're on right now was cut in by our mini excavator. And that's part of the reason that we opted for something so small like this, rather than getting something a bit bigger like a Yard Max that has tracks or a Wacker Newson tracked wheelbarrow, which actually we ended up ordering and we'll have a separate video on that. But in comparison to those, this wheelbarrow is relatively narrow. So it's an awful lot easier to get it down paths that are cut in by smaller tools or even cut in by hand. Of course, obviously some limitations still apply. Now, sometimes depending on the train, it may be a little bit easier to put this in reverse. Let's talk about the turning radius. So turning radius is not zero on the four wheel drive models. You can see right there. So you can multi-point turn it on some of these tighter paths, but it does take a while. Let's give you an idea of what it's like in reverse. So we can, oh, there we go. Limited slip would have been great there. There we go. Now, due to the overall design of the power control systems, it is worth noting that when one wheel on one axle starts slipping, it doesn't really seem to have the ability to send power to the other axle quite as easily. So definitely keep that in mind. But you can see that going essentially backwards and walking beside it, if the path is wide enough, it is a little bit easier to keep in control of the steering. One of the reasons that more rugged area traction is a little bit tricky is because the chassis doesn't really have much articulation. So it's not like the front axle, oh, self dump. And that's why we have a locking dump bed. The lack of wheel articulation is kind of why you end up with opposite wheels spinning because you don't end up with all four tires having good contact at the same time. Now, you can see going up the slope, this is a whole lot easier than it would be with a regular wheelbarrow. But I still do have to give it a little bit of push get it up the hill and there we go we made it to the top over the two and a half years that we've had this particular cart we've excavated a basement we've redone brick patios we've moved concrete we've moved 
all the granite blocks for the dry stack retaining wall that we're talking about in a separate video. You should make sure and check that one out. Um, so far, about uh, 60 to 80 tons of granite rock. We're probably gonna be moving about 200 or so more tons of this granite rock. Now, because of this retaining wall project, we have actually decided to upgrade from this electric wheelbarrow into something that's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more capable of steep slopes. So that is one of the important things to keep in mind with this guy right here, is that it will do slopes if you need to, but traction is important and it's not gonna do as steep a slopes as you could find in something like a 15 horsepower uh, four wheel drive wheelbarrow. Now it is important to remember that this is gonna be a lot less expensive than those more professional dump carts, something along the lines of the Wacker Newson DT10 that we ordered. But also keep in mind that you could get something like a Yard Max wheelbarrow with the tracks. Honda engine on it, that would be about the same price as the very top end model of this electric wheelbarrow. But then you have to decide, are you interested in the electric wheelbarrow or are you interested in the gasoline wheelbarrow? And for us, we looked at some of those options out there, but we decided to get the electric one for its simplicity, the ease of charging, etc. We've had no problem getting an entire day's worth of use out of this model and the new model has a bigger battery, so I expect it to last several days without charging. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. And of course, stay tuned for videos on our retaining wall project here, our garden project in general, and of course, a video upcoming on that all new diesel tracked dump barrow. That should be an awful lot of fun. I'll see you all later.